I actually think that the much more than politics, I think, I think what's really important for making money in a couple of years ahead is I think you have to start fundamentally believing that the dollar is going to get weaker. And I think you're supposed to orient your thinking around that, which means that foreign currency investments should be superior to U.S. dollar investments. I think that, um, the dollar topped almost three years ago on, on the Dixie basis. It was at 103, and it's down at, at, a, at a, a 97 handle today. And I, I think that what, we go back and take really big picture views. My favorite chart of this year, I, I, we may have talked about this before, but it's worth repeating if we didn't, or if, if, even if we did. If you go back to the 1980s, so very, very long-term view, you divide the world into four regions, Japan, Europe, United States, and emerging markets. And something very interesting has happened. Over, the, over the, the, that 35 year or so period, there's been every one of those four regions has had a moment where they were world beaters. They were viewed to be invincible. First, it was Japan in the late 80s. It was invincible. The, the value of the Imperial Palace land, which is fairly small in Tokyo, was actually viewed to be the same as all of California. Japan was that strong. They were manufacturing everybody out of business. Remember, the Nikkei was by far the best stock market in the late 80s. Then the recession came in the early 90s, and the Nikkei was the worst market, and it hasn't been back since. 30 years later, it hasn't come close to that 1989 level. Then came the euro in the late, in the late 1990s. And there was tremendous enthusiasm. It would be a reserve currency, potentially. There would be a lot of cooperation. It was the ascendancy of Europe. And the European stock market was by far the best in the late 90s. Then came the recession, the early 00s, and it got kneecapped. Hasn't been back there since. 20 years later, then in the early, in the middle of the OOs, it was a weak dollar. Emerging markets were strong with the weak dollar and China was very much on the, on the rise. And emerging markets were by far the best stock market in the world. Now what happened? Global financial crisis, emerging markets got wiped out. They haven't been back since. Well, who's the world beater now? For the last 10 years, by far, it's the United States. The S&P 500 has blown emerging markets, Japan and Europe totally out of the water over the past 10 years. That's partially because earnings have been better in the United States. It's partially because economic growth has been better in the United States. It's also because of financial engineering, which ties into that corporate bond thing, where you're able to get a lot of free money uh, for, for corporations to do buybacks. It's also the tax cut. Well, my view is this, that this pattern will repeat, and that in the next recession, the United States will be the worst stock market in the world, the dollar will be weak, and I don't believe we'll get back to the, whatever highs put in uh, uh, again in my career, similar to what happened to Japan, then Europe, then emerging markets. So I think that that's what you're supposed to be thinking about. And the linchpin to that thesis is that the dollar will be weaker thanks to the exploding deficits and the Fed going back towards zero. Uh,